Ahlan, ahlan, ahlan wa sahlan kwa mara nyingine mtazamaji wa Audi TV na karibu tena katika Aroto Live. Kipindi chako huwa ambacho kinawatafuta magwiji wetu wa michezo. Na hii leo ni bahati iliyoje. Tuko naye aliyekuwa mchezaji wa timu ya Taifa Harambe Stars eh anaitwa Taimu Atieno ambaye anarejea Kenya na atakuwa anatueleza kwa nini amerejea na ni mazuri yepi ambayo anarejea nayo ndani ya nchi ya Kenya. Welcome to Aroto Live Taiwo. Thank you for having me. Why is it Taiwo Atieno not Taiwo Otieno? My grandmother was Atieno and she left my grandfather so I think she wasn't happy with him having two wives. So she says they're going to be Atieno. So all my uncles and aunts were Atieno. Okay. In spite of my grandfather I think. <laughs> no problem about that. Now, who is Taiwo Atieno? Uh, I remember you coming into the Kenyan scene through the national team, uh, many didn't know <coughs> who Taiwo was. I'd like you to have this opportunity today. Who is Taiwo Atieno? Well, I'm, a, I'm a Kenyan footballer. Um, I grew up in London, England. Obviously, played football in England, and you know, like most kids, I love playing football. Um, when I was 18, 19, I was trying to play for Kenya. But there was a ban on, on, on Kenya's national team by FIFA. But throughout the years, I've always made my, myself known to, I think it was FKFF. There was FKL. <laughs> KFF, yeah, KFF. Kenya Football Federation. Yeah, yeah. So I made myself known to them, and I think there was a few reporters in around 2008-9 that were um, watching my games in America. I was playing at the time. so. Yeah, m much of my life has been spent in football, so that's my passion, that's what I love doing. Um, since I stopped playing in 2014, I've been working in private equity investments as a commercial director. I structure um, my own companies, other companies, um, and build out investment products for investors. Just before we move to, into, into your current uh, status or uh, what you're doing at the moment, I'd like to take you back to your playing days, perhaps uh, so that uh, most of these Kenyans can know exactly uh, where you played and uh, perhaps you, any achievement that you had. Because you came in, as I said earlier, uh, through the national team and you played a couple of matches before retiring. Mm -hmm. Where did Taiwo play before you came to the national team? So I was, at the time of coming to the national team, I was playing in America's A-League, which is the... Um, a league in which um, it's, it's, it's parallel to the MLS, but it's not the MLS. MLS wasn't necessarily the best league, but I was playing in America. Prior to that, I was playing in England um, for Warsaw Football Club, which was a championship team when I first went there in 2001. Uh, well, no, it was 2000, and 2000 I first went to Warsaw. Um, so I was signed, my first professional contract was with Warsaw Football Club in the championship, they were being managed by Paul Merson, who was the former Arsenal and England international. Um, and I learned a lot, obviously, being under him. I'm an Arsenal fan, so play, playing for him was a, a great privilege. Um, I also got the opportunity to, to play with, um, play for Ian Rush at Chester. I went there on loan. Um, but yeah, play, playing professional football in England was a massive privilege and an honour because I think about three million kids every year playing football in England and only maybe a hundred become professional. So I was one of the hundred and you know there's 95 professional clubs so it's not easy um, and I always tell people you know to become a professional in whichever league you're in is a, is a, is a very difficult thing. I mean Jamie Vardy who's the best striker in England right now he came through I think it was the conference so he came from the bottom league mm -hmm. up to the Premier League. Okay. So there's a lot of players that are very, very good in England, playing in the lower leagues, um, and some of them are lucky to get to the top, some of them are unlucky, but I think on the large part, it's, it's a very competitive country when it comes to football. Okay. So that's where I come from, I'm a com I'm a, I compete. And when I came to play for Kenya, I wanted to come and compete. I think the environment in football here is very different. You know, high altitude, the preparation and the standards of football wasn't to the same level that I was used to. But at the same time, I think that's where the opportunity sits. And that's what I'm about really, is coming here and sharing that knowledge and wisdom 
and experience that I got from England and bringing it here to Kenya so we can try and em emulate something similar. Okay, someone might wonder, <coughs> how, I'm sure most of the, the fans are wondering why perhaps you didn't play for England, you're born there. Why did you uh, decide Kenya? Because most of uh, players from Africa decide to play in Europe yeah. uh, for the European national uh, teams wherever yeah. they were born. How come Taiwo decided to play for Kenya? When I was under 14, under 13s, 14s, I got to play for England schoolboys. To play for England's national team, you know, I'm the same, I'm born the same year as Wayne Rooney. And I can tell you now, him at 16 was head and shoulders above everybody else. So I think people should understand that to play for England, you have to be very, 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 very good. Not just good, you've got to be very exceptional. Good and consistently good. So, so what you're telling us is that... Uh, I wasn't good enough. That's the facts of the matter. To play for England, you must be honest with yourself. And in fact, because at that particular moment, your main challenger was Windrowing, because you're saying your yeah. agents in one way or the other. Essentially, I would have had to have been competing for Wayne Rooney's spot, or Michael yes. Owen. And I think anyone who loves football has to be honest about the levels, you know what I mean? And uh, when I was growing up and, and, and my football education, we were always told, critique yourself. Are you good enough? Are you here? Where are you sitting in the pecking order? Yeah? So you always evaluate yourself honestly. You, you can't be like this player that thinks, I should be in the Premier League. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, you must earn that. You, know, you must perform every day in training and then it matches. And I'll be honest with you, you know, I lost my mum at 15. I was an orphan. It was very difficult for me to be consistently good. And I'll be the first to admit that, it was very difficult. I was very good as a young boy, but I think as I got older, my game got more structured into being a target man and I was a battering ram for teams. Um, but I wasn't Wayne Rooney good, you know what I mean? And I think there's nothing wrong with that. I still played professionally and I, and I enjoyed my career. But if someone asked me why I didn't play for England, I would tell them I wasn't good enough. To play for England. <laughs> it's important. Just before we take a break, um, yeah. and, and perhaps uh, talk about uh, your current uh, mission back into, mm. into Kenya. Um, how can you rate, how can you compare uh, the infrastructure? Because uh, basically Africa, uh, the main challenge here is our infrastructure. Yeah, yeah. How can you compare the youth infrastructure <coughs> in the UK, for example, to what we are having in, in the country? Yeah, I mean, that was the first thing I noticed when I, when I came in 2009, was that the infrastructure around football was non-existent in some parts of the country. Obviously here in, in Nairobi, we've got Kasarani and Nairo Stadium, and obviously Kasarani has practice fields and other things, but uh, the standard of the pitches, the standard of, I guess, the preparation for training, the standard, much of everything around football in this country needs improving. So even sports, rehab and, and injury treatment, is, is a big part of football in England. We've got sports law, we've got sports psychology, sports nutrition. Um, these things are what create the environment for top football players to go on and be the best they can be. We don't have that environment here. So for me, the way you build that environment, you've got to build it around the clubs. So the football clubs have to create the environment with their training facilities, their stadiums, um, and then that's how you get young people into football. Um, and that's really where we need to begin. Okay, just hold that thought. Uh, we'll take a short break. Tazamaji, tuko dae Taibo Atieno, alikuwa mchezaji wa team ya Taifa Rambe Stars. Amezuru Barulaya, amekuwa mpaka kule Amerika. Tuzame, tukizuka, nataka kupike gunzo kuhusu safari yake ya kurege ya Kenya. Na vile vile, alivuchezea team ya Taifa Rambe Stars, mambo ya likuwa vipi. Tunazama, tukizuka. Tuko na itai wati ya muzika ya mbali. Sadaka kabisa mtazamaji wa Audi TV kama bado uko nasi shukrani na kwa wewe ambaye unaungana nasi karibu sana tuko naye Taiwo Atkeno 
alikuwa mchezaji wa timu ya Taifa Rugby Stars mzaliwa kule bara Ulaya anasema anarudi Kenya kuweza kurudisha mkono na tumeongea kuhusu kuzaliwa kwake na Kanada yake hapo awali lakini sasa nataka kuangazie Harambe Stars. Taibo, when was the first time uh, you um, uh, you played for the national team and how come how, how are you selected because you are you are still playing outside the country? Yeah, well, <coughs> I was in the first preliminary round of um, players of 50 players in Kasawani. So I think it was around January 2009 came into camp. So I had to, I had to earn myself into that team. It wasn't I wasn't just given a spot in the final 20 and I wasn't just given my passport. I actually got into the final 20 and that's when I saw the minister and that's when I saw um, the prime minister because I I was actually in the team. So my first game after obviously being um, given my my citizenship was against Mozambique. I sh I was trying to play in the Tunisia game but I missed the deadline. So, yeah, that was my first game against Mozambique away. After the match we lost, they had all those Vuvuswalers and their fans vandalised our bus. But it was a good experience, <laughs> no, I loved it. Nairobi or you no, that was in... Um, um, Maputo? No, yeah, it was in Nairobi. Okay. Yeah, we played them here in Nairobi and then we went to Mozambique. Mozambique. Yeah. So, so, so you mean, you, you, the, the Kenyan passport, you got it uh, when you played for the national... How was the feeling? Yeah, extremely um, relieving and proud all at the same time because it took me three months to meet with the Prime Minister at the time. I was going to the immigration building and eventually every floor was telling me no dual citizenship in Kenya and asking me to renounce my, my British passport. And I just said to the Minister of Immigration at the time, I said, I'm playing professional football in England and America. I can't give up my British passport, otherwise I won't get So how was it? Because by then, the, the constitution was not. Was it after the constitution? I think the constitution had been. In, I think it had been passed by parliament, enacted by parliament, but it hadn't been signed into law by the president. the president. So I think at the time, the the minister said, "Ty, you should go and see the prime minister, see if he can assist you." Um, when I met, obviously, uh, with the prime minister, he he asked his attorney general, his attorney solicitor what he could do and he advised the Prime Minister that under the new constitution um, dual citizenship was um, provided for so it was a lawful thing so my my citizen certificate is pursuant to the 2010 constitution so you're among the guys who benefited with the enactment of the new constitution exactly yeah okay now let's move into your mission um, I'll tell you what the other day I saw you being launched as a uh, an official of Kenya Premier League. <coughs> yeah. For the sake of our viewers, what is this mission? So me as a commercial director, um, it's a leadership position, but I'm coming in to look at the commercial operations of the KPL and also implement some new objectives and some new targets. One of those targets is to get these clubs, who are all members of the KPL, um, incorporated and invested get investment into these clubs so they can have youth training facilities and stadia um, and also operational costs covered. So my, my whole thing is youth development. We want to get the young people in Kenya in good training facilities, get them educated, nurtured in the you know, philosophy of good football. Um, and so that gives us a chance with the national team, you know, to develop, to have some good players being developed in the clubs, but then when they come to the national team, they're performing at a higher level. Okay. So how are you intending to achieve this? You know, um, this is a country where there's yeah. a lot of bureaucracy. Yeah. How are you intending to achieve what you, you, you have in mind? Yeah, so my, my, my observation of Kenya over the last 12 years is that the Constitution 2010 has provided a devolution of powers to the counties. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So each of the counties, 47 of them, have governors and those governors and their cabinets you know, have you know, some powers in which they can assist investors with coming into their counties and setting up clubs. Yeah? I'm of the view that if we're going to have better standards of football and also create a more harmonious environment for football in Kenya, I think we've got to start encouraging investment into these counties and having the clubs based in those counties, investing in those counties and giving the young people in those counties the, the training and the opportunities. Mm -hmm. 
um, through these um, facilities. So for me, as a, as a Kenyan, <coughs> we will be looking to get existing clubs and new clubs into each county um, and then invest in land to be training facilities and stadiums. Um, and it's really that simple. I think, uh, you know, a lot of our clubs right now, they all exist in Nairobi, mm -hmm. which is just one city, one county in Kenya. So I think, you know, investing in other counties will also attract domestic tourism. We want Kenyans to feel like, yeah, let's go and travel up to Eldoret or Kiambu or Vihiga or, you know, Kasumu. So we want to get people out of Nairobi and start seeing other parts of Kenya, but also getting young people in Kenya competing with their neighbours rather than always being here in Nairobi. Well, what about the capacity building? Because most of these clubs, uh, and uh, uh, I think you can correct me if I'm wrong, most of these clubs in Kenya, um, if you ask me, is the capacity to handle uh, perhaps what you're talking about? Because mm -hmm. when you bring in ideas, yeah. and yet the officials within the clubs, uh, they don't have the capacity uh, of, 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 of even uh, comprehending what yeah. you're saying. Are you looking at the capacity building of... of yeah, of course. I mean, I'm, I'm a product of skills-based education. I didn't go to university. <laughs> Much of everything I learned was from my accountant and my lawyer. Um, and obviously just doing it. But anyone who wants to get the what I call the corporate governance side of football, if they want to learn it, I'm here to assist with that. Um, you know, and I think, I think most Kenyans want to see a better game, you know, and be a part of a better game. What I'm bringing to the table is a professional structure in which anybody who's in existing clubs, if they want to be professionalised, we can assist them with that step. Um, if it's a new club, then we will make sure that whoever's the, the directors uh, and the board is, is packed with non-executives and executive directors so that the clubs are getting the best possible professionalism from their board. Also, we want to work with um, you know, the top four accountants, make sure that the monies that these clubs are generating or, being, or receiving as investment is, being, is going to the right sources. Um, and also, we need lawyers, sports lawyers, to represent the clubs um, and, and be divested from you know, other interests and from the directors. So these structures protect the football club. Um, and that's what we, what we need to implement here. Last but not least, uh, this is a question that uh, I must ask you, as someone who has seen how football is handled elsewhere. Mm. What is your take with the Football Kenya Federation? At the moment, there's some sort of, uh, <coughs> if you ask me, uh, fiasco day in, day out. I think the integrity of the game has obviously come into disrepute um, and I think the sports ministry is trying to um, protect the integrity of the game by getting transparency and some accountability. You know, I, I think it, it, people shouldn't worry about FIFA um, because FIFA is subject to you know, the court um, of arbitration for sport. Mm -hmm. those, those are, the court is the procedure to decide whether if Kenya is banned, is, has been lawfully banned. And I think there's justification, you know, the ministry is not just coming out and interfering with football. They're saying there's been a breach of trust and a breach of power, um, and there should be accountability. I don't think it's, it's the wrong decision to take. Um, and I think Kenyans should support the government in that pursuit of accountability um, and to restore the integrity of the game. Okay. Thank you very much, Taiwo, for visiting our studios. And once again, uh, thank you for what you're doing to Kenyan uh, soccer. And I believe that uh, this will go a long way to encourage and even uh, get us more stars, more Taiwo's yeah. in the future. More Dennis Solietsis, more Marigas, <laughs> and more Victor Wanyamas. Mentally, <coughs> Dennis and, uh, and, and Mariga, who was your best uh, striking partner? Uh, I used to, I, I, I love playing with Dennis because me and him complement each other. Obviously, I'm, I'm tall, I'm strong. I would be able to get him into positions where he would have probably an easier strike on goal. Okay. Um, Mariga was an exceptional player. Victor was a very, very good player. So I think, you know, we, we've had very good players in the last 20 years. My biggest concern is that we don't see any more of them. And it's not because the talent's not there. 
It's because no one is nurturing, no one has invested into the nurturing and developing and educating of those players. And I always say, you know, and, and I think, you know, I'll touch on what was said uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago. If you have in the national team a manager that is there for, let's say, like Gareth Southgate, five, six years, yeah, their job is to instill a football philosophy into the under 10s, the under 11s, the under 12s national teams and sometimes you know give guidance to the clubs to implement a football philosophy so if you change the manager every single year how can you ever have a football philosophy that can bring through talent you know talent just doesn't grow on trees you've it's actually got to nurture it and develop it and train it so i think in kenya we've, we've suffered from a lack of um consistency with the managers we've had the football philosophy that we've not been able to acquire and that's, yeah, that's hurt us a lot. Thank you very much, uh, Taiwan. All the best. Thank you. In what you plan. Now, Mtazamadi ya mekuwa ni Taiwan Tieno. Anakuambia, siyo kwa mba hatuna talanta hapa Kenya. Talanta hipo, lazima talanta hile tukaibuza. Shukra nga kweza kuitizama Rocho Live. Na naku, natumai umeji enjoy. Hadu wiki inayo kuja. Zili kutizama. Asanta.